This class is concerned with organizational communications. It'll look at different types of communications uh, that flow within an organization and in particular through the electronic medium. So it'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of various types of electronic communications. Let's start by looking at organizational communication. The internet is changing the way in which business is conducted. Uh, we know very well that over the last few years uh, business practices have changed immensely because of the impact of the internet. We know that businesses can seek information, can query databases, can place orders, can check product availability. They can do many business practices now online and do it very efficiently as a consequence of the development and the continuing development of the Internet. Business skills and language is increasingly based around network processes and requirements. So the language we use in business, logging on and logging off and uh, databases and queries and the, the language we're using in everyday business is broadly based on internet language. So the internet is pervasive. It not only facilitates speedy and accurate communications but it also influences the way we we think and the way we structure our thinking in business through the changes in language. There's an increasing use of databases of electronic forms and web pages. Electronic forms are a good way of collecting information. They're very efficient and very fast. Databases are a way of holding information and enabling the, the user to interrogate the database, to find out relationships in data, relationships between one variable and the next. And of course web pages as the way in which information can be disseminated very very fast within organizations through LANs or can be projected to the outside world in the case of a business website. Business focus is shifting to electronic forms of communication and commerce itself. So it, it's, it's moving. The way we, we think of business is moving from the more traditional paper-based businesses the face-to-face -face type communications to much more sophisticated electronic forms which are seen as much more efficient and much more some of the information stored on, on, on databases are seen as much more reliable so there are many advantages which we'll talk about later in the context of using electronic communications how the internet is changing organizational or, uh, communications? Well, uh, three ways the internet is influencing business practices. First of all, the new way. This is the new way. This is the way in which business has developed. It's difficult to describe it otherwise. There is an old way, the way in which it was done in the past, and there is the new way. And the new way is through electronics, electronic media, uh, through web browsers and through databases and so on. And the new way is influencing the way we think about organizations, the way organizations are structured, the way the processes within organizations are linked. So we're getting a much more systematic and indeed systems view of the organization. We also have this bridge to the outside world in which uh, supplies can be sought globally. Uh, the internet doesn't have boundaries so uh, queries on the internet are in a sense global queries. Now contrast that with the past when we we sought information we might seek it out locally, geographically. It may be a local search, a local search of warehouses and suppliers and local companies. Now it's not just regional and national, it's truly international. 
and we can also seek information just in time we can we can relate our business practices and sequence our business practices in a just in time format when the product is delivered just in time and we receive supplies into the stores just in time so there's no costly stock holding so the whole business can be tuned to the if you like the rhythm of the wider business community and the sequences in which uh, components arrive in the stores and raw materials arrive the way the production within the business is organized and the order dates that are on the books they can all be linked and linked very efficiently now the new way well the old way as I said earlier was really labor intensive it involved many people creating printing storing and retrieving information there was a lot of information floating around and generally speaking it was on paper and there were upsides and downsides of that for a start paper was was a comforting factor to many people it was nice to see things on paper but but paper got lost paper uh, deteriorated over time and uh, sometimes the messages on the paper were confusing and misleading the new way has the following characteristics the control is centralized generally speaking nowadays it operates from a server the documents are stored in some repository and the server pulls out the documents and delivers the documents when they are required the documents may be updated and amended by uh, managers departmental managers or divisional managers or whoever and put back into storage and taken out the next time so the chances of it being lost or uh, errors creeping in are vastly reduced there's a shorter time on delivery the lead time has been reduced because it's much more efficient the the throughput of information through the organization is more efficient because of better communications it means that the lead time on the the products themselves the products or the services are also reduced so the lead time is much better in these organizations and it's not that labor intensive the the server and the the various computers that make the documents that are stored somewhere on the server let's say um, they are doing a lot of the heavy lifting the word processor today is much more efficient than a typewriter from the past and there's no filing cabinets required and endlessly seeking out paper and trying to find lost bits of paper and lost information it's stored and it's stored efficiently so it's it's less labor intensive and it's easily changed if a change is required then it's simply a matter of going to the server and altering a document or al altering a set of documents and storing it back on the server and there's accountability all the way through it's possible to trace who changed the document or who last altered the document so there is accountability it's much more efficient in that sense it's a dynamic medium with a high level of interaction it's possible to have one part of the organization talking to the other part of the organization through the electronic medium uh, the, the organization can send messages and updates on progress on work or progress on particular components or on design or on whatever it is so it's a much more dynamic uh, system of interaction in the past perhaps the interaction was a weekly meeting now it may be instantaneous the information may flow from one manager to the next uh, many times a day and indeed many of the machines may be able to report on their own status so even the 
the technical side of a business may be able to monitor itself and feed back into the, the managerial information database about the business. The new way, the new, the new challenges revolve around control and the avoidance of chaos. It's always the case that when you have a new system, you've got to keep control. You've got to maintain the control on the business and make sure that the new system can do what the old system did, except it can do it better. It can do it more efficiently. So there is a, a strong desire to avoid chaos, avoid complete collapse. So, for example, uh, businesses may have a server serving up the documents, but it may have several backups. And in fact, good pre practice, and most businesses will follow this, will back up all of their documents every night. So if anything on the world was to happen, the most to lose is one day. But in fact, uh, it's, it's common now to have servers that are continuously backing up. So it's not just uh, backed up every night, it, it may be backed up continuously. Whenever a document is updated, uh, a backup is saved on a separate machine, just in case. The business environment is becoming complex and managers will have to exercise control if meaningful use is to be made of this resource. So it's important that the managers control the, the processes. It's also important that the managers are familiar with how the process works and are able to, to deal with any issues that arise as a consequence of this form of communications. Now let's look at something called the law of digital assets. Unlike physical assets, digital assets are not consumed. Physical assets are consumed. We, we use up physical assets in the production process. But digital assets, for example, documents, uh, saved reports, these are not consumed. They may be accessed many, many, many times and they're still there at the end. They're still in the same pristine form at the end. So digital assets may be used over and over and over and do not diminish. They are not used, used up in the process of that uh, use. This means they may be used over and over again. The Value may be created, uh, it may be continuously recycling the digital assets. By recycling them, I mean once the digital assets have been developed, say for example production schedules or marketing plans or whatever it is, once they've been developed, they become a digital asset of the business. They don't get consumed by use they are still stored on the server, but they may be amended, they may be altered, and the new version may be saved. So the old version has been integrated into a new version and that will help to promote the business by efficiently updating existing documents. It's always the case that there will be some maintenance required. Servers wear out or servers break down. They are, servers are physical entities, they are machines. So it's important that there are backups. It's important that the business has built in a technology that will update itself and that its absolutely key assets the digital assets we're talking about, these are secure. They may be saved on another server somewhere else in the organization. They may be ser saved on several servers. Um, just in case something happens, the business can go back and recall uh, its, its information. So <clears throat> there's constant work 
on improving and repackaging digital assets. Business plans can be updated, uh, meetings can be held and the digital plan is updated. Um, the plan is then available to everybody who was at the meeting. They may reflect upon it, make contributions, make suggestions and the plan may be further updated later and so on. So it's it's an efficient way of developing plans. It's an efficient way of controlling production flows. It's an efficient way of dealing with HRM issues and so on. Now the Internet at Work, well traditional businesses may be divided into large organizations that enjoy economies of scale and have large resources. Economies of scale means large businesses are able to exploit their size. They're able to make bulk buying and negotiate good terms from the banks because they are large businesses. And generally speaking large businesses have large resources. So that's one form. The other form of small organizations and the small organizations have an advantage as well because they can change very quickly. They can change from one line of production into another. They're able to restructure themselves very quickly. But essentially there are the two forms, large and small. Now the distinction between these is starting to break down because of the internet. Smaller companies can now tap into information that was previously unavailable. Smaller companies are able to get the information that in the past perhaps only large companies could find or they had research departments or they had specialist personnel who was constantly trying to find information and feedback information to, to the company to help them plan and so on. Now smaller companies can get access to high quality information and they can do it by doing searches online. Sometimes they have to pay for uh, access to particular databases but it's still cheap. So the internet helps to solve the problem of distance and time that was previously a major problem for small businesses. Small businesses in the past could not spend a lot of time looking for information or um, doing market research or, or whatever. They didn't have the resources as well. Distance and time was against them and resources. But now that may be changing because of the internet. It now may be possible to ask customers and potential customers about their feelings about the product by simply sending them an electronic form asking them to complete a small amount of information. The response rate may not be very high but they're getting something back, they're getting some feedback through the, the medium. And the internet is also changing the way we work. We have teleworking. Uh, people stay at home. Why sit in a traffic jam? Why set out for work two hours before you get there? And when you get there you're tired, you're annoyed, you've had, you've been sitting in a car or on a bus for ages, you've been sitting on a train that broke down or whatever. So if it's possible to work from home, why not? And it also brings more people into the labour market, more skilled people. There are many people who have disabilities and who can't uh, walk, maybe confined to a wheelchair, but they're intelligent people. Intelligent people who are capable of making a good contribution. So teleworking, get them to work from home. So the internet brings new ways of working. We have uh, video conferencing and we have all sorts of processes that can almost simulate a face-to-face -face environment. So why not exploit that? It's, it's a useful way to have people engaged in the business. Their time is valuable and their time is focused on the business. Just in time information, well, just in time inventory control means attempting to match production with co uh, customer demand in such a way as to avoid the cost of maintaining an inventory. In an ideal just in time world, 
the, the stocks coming into the stores will be booked out of the stores almost immediately and used in production. That's the ideal. So there are, there's nothing in the store. The, the lorries arrive making deliveries and the raw materials or components or whatever is delivered is used immediately. But to synchronize that requires a considerable amount of effort, a considerable amount of uh, detailed planning. Now in the past that would be very difficult to do, involve phone calls and trying to trying to arrange it on time. But with the advent of uh, networking it may be possible to to sequence it better. JIT information provides organizations with the capacity to create, acquire and disseminate information in an in an efficient fa uh, fashion. So JIT information can can flow around the system. What orders are required, what raw material is required, what components are required, uh, what's available from the suppliers, when is the next delivery due. So the whole business can be sequenced logically and efficiently as a consequence of the better information, the, the more precise information there is. We also have intra-organizational communication. Uh, three major changes have occurred as a result of, of electronic communications. First of all, email. It's easy to overlook email because we all use it so frequently. But email has made a dramatic impact on the way businesses operate. We'll talk about email in, in a second. We also have intranets. Intranets, local networks that can pass documents and instructions and communications around the organization very efficiently. Nothing to do with the internet. These are internal networks within the business and managers may access them to bring up information, bring up documents, uh, bring up schedules or whatever and they are very efficient. And there's also voice over IP which is like internet telephony. So businesses are able to make phone calls, they're able to uh, speak to other people online, they're able to, as I said earlier, they're able to make phone calls to, to old-fashioned telephones. They can use the telephone network. The communications facilities that are offered through electronic means are incredibly good and getting better all the time and which will again foster efficiency and promote efficiency within the, the business. Teleconferencing is also becoming quite important. It depends on the size of the business and it depends on the location. Perhaps there are different plants, uh, different areas of production perhaps in a, in a given city there might be perhaps two plants, one in one area, one in a, a totally different area. Well it's, it's important perhaps that the two of them are coordinated, that they are linked. And teleconferencing is a good way of doing it. Managers can speak to each other, they can speak face to face. They can talk about the schedule and what's happening and what's needed to be done and they can teleconference a few times every day. Or if there's an issue they can immediately contact their opposite numbers in the other plants and talk about what's required. So it's then very very important and increasingly used means of electronic communications. Now let's go back over these and let's start by looking at um, uh, email. Well email this is the fundamental engine of electronic commerce. It may be used for orders, for documents, for spreadsheets, CAD files, that's um, computer-aided design, CAD files as well as general communications facilities. So an email is it's a correspondence, it, it's like uh, as you know because you, you, you obviously use emails like 
most people in the world who have access to uh, this form of technology. But emails contain a, a note saying, hi, here are the documents that you required. But in the appendix, they can include all sorts of attachments. The attachments could be a spreadsheet or a Word document or uh, a desktop published document or whatever it is. It could be a video, whatever. So there is a facility in the email to be very flexible about the types of information that it passes on. The benefits of email to uh, intra-organisational communications, well, it's efficient. It's very efficient. The email arrives, it's kept in the inbox, the user providing the access to their emails will know that they have some emails in, in their box. When they read their email, the, the person who sent it may be informed that the email has been read. There is good communications. It's a very fast delivery. It's not like writing a letter and posting it and getting the postman to deliver it the next day or whatever. This happens within seconds. And this facility is global. It's possible to send an email from one side of the, the world to the other in a matter of a minute or whatever. A very fast, uh, at a very fast speed. So it's a very efficient and very speedy and there's accountability. The, the person sending it knows who it's going to, knows when the person's read it. There is, if there's no response, a follow-up email can be, can be sent. It may be that the person who sent it hasn't accessed their emails because they were ill or on holiday or whatever, but there's accountability. The email has been sent and there's evidence that the email has been sent. The sent box shows exactly what was sent and when it was sent. And it's possible to automate emails to be sent at various times, like reminders. Uh, don't forget to whatever on a particular day. And as I said, it's, impos it's possible to embed HTML, the hypertext markup language, which is the language of the Internet to embed sound and video onto emails. And it's also possible to attach. Embedding actually puts them into the document. Attaching means they are linked to the document and sent with the document. So it's possible to send all the things I was talking about earlier, um, CAD files, desktop published files, Word files, spreadsheets and so on. And there's visibility. It's keeping track of correspondence. It's only a question of going back and looking at what emails have been sent and setting up folders so that the emails are sorted automatically into folders, um, set up a rule to sort the emails and then going back and it's easy to see what, what needs to be done and what was done in that particular day. The disadvantages of emails, well, they are impersonal. Uh, a handwritten letter is quite personal because it's handwritten and uh, the person has taken time to sit down and, and write it out. Emails tend to be impersonal. They're very useful for business, but not so good for uh, more personal communications. They can be time consuming and also misused. Sometimes people send the emails that are unnecessary. And also there is a, a cr an increasing use of emails for the wrong pers uh, purpose. Spamming, for example. Just generally sending out emails to many people asking them to buy a product or press on a link or whatever. And they may be used to send viruses so they can be misused. So there is a danger with emails and it's important when using emails that there is a good antivirus program uh, established on the machine to check that the email is uh, 
safe. But it can be misused in terms of time consuming and uh, just spam sent for the wrong reason. So spamming is an issue. So called mind dumping. People send emails on subjects that might never be written if email did not exist. Sometimes because it's so easy to write an email and send it to someone people just communicate. They're almost communicating for the sake of communicating. There is no real logic in what they're trying to say or do. It's, it's just they've got half an idea about something and they want to communicate it. Um, again, it might be wasting the recipient's time. Intranets. Well, this is a small local version of the internet. In fact, it's possible to have a bridge between an internet and the internet so the internet runs and also the, the people using the internet can access the internet but it may be the case that the internet is simply closed off it's an internal network within the business they have the following features um, very good or rapid dissemination of information throughout the organization once information has been put on the intranet, it's available to recipients and uh, it's, it's a way of enabling organisations <coughs> to communicate internally and to communicate efficiently internally. Um, it simply uses a browser, uh, the same browser as would be used on the intranet. So, there's no learning curve as such to go through. It doesn't involve anything new from the user's point of view. They go on, they, they go into the browser, they might log on to the system and once they're on all the information that they need, the production schedules, the rotas for working and so on and so on, everything's available. And it comes out of a central repository of files. They've got, generally speaking, very high bandwidth because they are internal and normally they run on cables. They can run on fiber optic cables. So it's possible to transfer files at incredible speeds around an internet. So video and teleconferencing and so on, those are very easy and very high quality within intranets. And because they're not linked to the outside world, they're secure. They're, they're secure from viruses because uh, there's no way the virus can get onto the system. They are physically separated from the internet. Extra uh, organizational communications. Uh, well, this communication is between the organization and a group of uh, individuals outside of the organization. So it's possible to have uh, communications between an organization and a group of individuals outside. It may shorten the supply chain and introduce greater efficiency by eliminate, eliminating data re-inputting. So if someone does the, the data inputting, let's say production statistics or stock holding quantities or whatever then everyone who accesses that particular part of the internet will get that information and they don't need themselves to go searching for it or inputting it themselves so it it is an efficient use of time the information is inputted once and shared by many Uh, it's possible to recruit employees. Um, the search process and the search process that organizations go through, I should say, to find the right people to work, this is greatly facilitated by use of these type of networks. It may be that the jobs are advertised internally within the organization and personnel from within the organization are invited to apply for promotion or uh, for a change of work or whatever. But the information is communicated 
and the job requirements can be posted quite easily and so it's it's a good way of communicating in terms of uh, HR procedures and it also is a way of uh, making the employees and the various personnel aware of HR requirements and uh, safety issues and so on. The human factor needs to be taken into account when dealing with electronic communications and there are the benefits of teleworking for example increased worker autonomy when we were teleworking we may be working away from the, the business, we may be working from home but we're in contact with the business, we're in contact through uh, technology, we may use Skype or we may use dedicated teleconferencing software and networks but we can choose to where to work in the home, we can choose uh, how we work so we have greater autonomy and greater freedom and this may lead to greater motivation and greater enjoyment of the job and we have greater control over the schedules when we do the work we may work hard in the morning and have a long lunch or we may not work until the evening or it's up to us perhaps providing the schedules are met providing we deliver when we say we're, we're going to deliver and this means we've got flexibility in our personal lives we may be able to live out our personal lives much more efficiently and we're able to facilitate the requirements that people have in family contexts or in uh, personal contexts so they're able to uh, work around issues because we've got more flexibility and we've got greater morale and enhanced trust we we like the business and we like what we're doing and we feel happier because we are trusted to work away from the the workplace we don't have to sit in the office we don't have to as I said earlier fight the traffic on the way in and fight the traffic on the way home you could say there is a disadvantage there as well because we're not uh, dealing with colleagues at work and there is no social side to the work involved in this but maybe there's a blend to be struck here perhaps, perhaps there is a balance and the balance could be uh, working from home two days and working from the office three days or whatever but generally speaking it's been found that we would have higher productivity we will apply ourselves better and meet the tasks that are set uh, more efficiently there will certainly be fewer work, workplace conflicts because we're not there to, uh, to argue with colleagues and not there to dispute everything and colleagues will not annoy us by their behaviour or whatever so there are fewer conflicts because we have greater flexibility, we don't have to go in, we go in when we we have to, when, when, when we need to rather than being forced in on a daily basis so the human factor needs to be taken into account when we deal with um, electronic communications and there are problems with it as I've been suggesting earlier uh, there's decreased opportunity for development and promotion because we're not so visible in the office it may be we get passed over for promotion or we get passed over for interesting jobs and tasks because we're simply not visible we're not we're not seen uh, we're away from the office we're not we're not communicating face to face and there's no interaction with our superiors or with the managers or whoever so it may be the case that uh, we get passed over. It could be that there's an increased conflict between home and work. I said earlier that there should be less. Well, in some cases it could be more because sometimes if the pressure from work is considerable 
and we have to spend a lot of time working on particular tasks then perhaps the people at home the other members of the family may not be so sympathetic they may not understand exactly what what's happening and don't understand why the person spending all this time in front of a, a laptop or uh, working all the time or appears to be working all the time and not contributing towards family life so there may be increased conflict between home and work there are certainly less face to face contacts working from home means that people are separated out from their work colleagues from the managers and so on so there's less face to face and they may become estranged uh, it may be that the people working from home uh, get left out of um, social functions related to work or uh, are not in on on current discussions about certain ideas or uh, they're not kept up to date with what's happening so it's important to have face-to-face -face contacts for that reason. There could be reduced job security. It may be because the people are not seen. Then the senior management think they're not that important. They're, they're not seen. They're not seen working. Uh, there's no contact with them. So they're, they're not considered to be that important. That job is not important. Which may not be the case. It may be a very important task that the people are working on. It's just that the senior management don't see the person doing it and therefore don't consider it to be high priority. Possible. There's also the case where it simply leads to social isolation. People working from home become isolated. They can become cut off from the office, from the the social side of working. They don't talk to their colleagues, they don't they don't integrate with their colleagues, they're not involved a lot with their colleagues or with the management. They're seen as peripheral almost and they become isolated. There's no way of controlling the hours of work. So it's very difficult to say what is the right amount. The, when, when the work goes through to the home it may be too much. If the same work came through to the office and the people were working 9 to 5, at 5 o'clock they finish. They might have to take work home sometimes to complete it, but, but management will be aware of the volume of the work. Because they're working from home, there may be increased workload. Resolving the human problem in electronic business requires an appropriate HRM, uh, Human Resource Management, policy. Um, it's, it's crucial to employ people with appropriate internet skills. Uh, the use of internet technology is almost essential in today's world. And it's important for employees who wish to succeed in business to be familiar with the terminology of the internet and the processes and be be confident in the use of this particular technology. It's important to be able to assess internet skills and abilities during performance appraisals. Uh, for a start the technology is constantly evolving and it's important to ensure that personnel are keeping up to date. There may be a need for training programs or for courses or whatever to ensure that the personnel within the business are up to date on current thinking within the internet, within the relevant part of the internet that relates to the business. So um, they should be able to not just send emails but they should be able to deal with searches and know how to conduct efficient searches and uh, perhaps make brief videos or whatever. They should have that sort of competency. It's also important that the management ensures that there's health and safety at work. People sitting in front of a, a screen 
computer screen, a VDU, sitting there day after day, hour after hour, may not be good for health. So it's important that the human resource people ensure that there is a good healthy working environment and that there is a balance between what is required from from workers working online and their requirements to walk around get some exercise uh, break up what they're they're doing and break up the day with different tasks there should be policies on the misuse of the internet um, not just access to uh, sites that are inappropriate in the context of the business or, or just generally inappropriate but but also not using the the internet to access personal accounts and social networking for long periods of time and sorting out their photos when they should be actually doing some work so the, it's necessary to ensure that there's no misuse of the facility. So these are some of the ideas that we need to consider when we talk about electronic communications. And that's all I'm going to deal with in this session, so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.